Hey, this is Ryan and Jasmine from Mother Mother with Milky. Last night in Melbourne was amazing to to show up in a you know a city on the other side of the world for the first time and be greeted by 2500 people in this beautiful ornate theater was mind-blowing so musically I think that was the highlight and yeah touring is such that you go everywhere but you don't see anything or, or do anything because you're so busy but I went for a nice photo walk in a botanical garden in Brisbane uh, that's a fond memory do, do you have a fond pastime memory here last night was so amazing um, it was my birthday in Australia and so the entire audience sang me happy birthday so it was like 2,500 people and I don't know if this is a normal Aussie thing but everyone had it was like so beautiful like there was, was everyone was so in tune and it was just like really satisfying and um, and a really beautiful experience so that was nice yeah The Mother Mother live show these days is an honor to the discography and the legacy as a whole. Because we've been around the block and we have eight albums out. And so it's less of a new album tour and more of a, you know, the full story tour. So we cover moments from each era. We we spill it all on the stage. It's a very physical, animated performance. Um, there's lots of good speaking moments with, I think, positive messages surrounding love and unity and, and self-acceptance. So there's that component. Really, like the audience at, at these shows do so much of the work in carrying the energy. These kids and the Mother Mother community as a whole are some of the sweetest people we've ever come across in our life. And we're just awed every every night by the, the the quality of humanity in the room so that in a thing is something to behold almost more than the band not to like downsell us but truly the the vibe of the people there is equal i think to the show that we're putting on i mean it's everything it's really really everything they have given us this this whole picture that you see now us being in Australia wouldn't have happened us being in Europe wouldn't have happened so it's super important to connect um, you know mentally physically spiritually all of the things and Ryan does a beautiful job of you know talking to the audience every night and creating that kind of safe space to be yourself and unify and um, it's really lovely agreed I couldn't have said it better myself <laughs> well a Mother Mother show would be remiss without the Hayloft medley. Uh, so we have a sequel now to our classic song, Hayloft, and the show ends with this medley. And I love that moment. It's just so fiery, and people go crazy, and it's the perfect climax. So that's my pick. I mean, I'm going to have to go Hayloft too, and to the medley as well. It's just like, sorry to pick the same one as you. I stole your, your light there, but um, it's excellent. Well, and you have your moment in the middle of Hayloft too, as well. So it's sort of like a three-song three uh, you know, buffet with your girl alone <laughs> moment. That's, that's pretty special. It's really fun, yeah. Yeah, it's been an interesting ride. Um, in terms of the musical component, the production component. A lot of it, you know, has to do with how the industry shifts. Um, I think when we began, we didn't know anything about the music industry. And so the music came out very beautifully, naively innate to who we were without thinking about reception and thinking about format. And so it was the quirkiest and the most strange at the beginning and then as we got acquainted with the industry which during our coming up was driven a lot by radio we i think shifted to straddle that line somewhat the sound kind of got more succinct more modern more tough for a number of years and now all these years later like well over a decade later we're returning more to that quirky, uh, eccentric sensibility because the message that we're getting back from this legion of new young fans is, is that they like that 
the most. Um, there's, there seems to be a yearning for something that's a little more unconventional. So these days we feel quite liberated in, in returning to our roots while also, I think, borrowing some of the more modern techniques that we've picked up along the way. It's kind of like Mother Mother 2.0 now. <laughs> and it's a pretty exciting time, uh, creatively speaking. We're just so fortunate that it's full circle. Like, I, I think it's such a rare occurrence for a, a band's early music to give them a new lease on life so much later on. And for that early music to influence a new path forward, it's cool. Yeah, we n none of us saw it coming. I did. <laughs> I saw it coming. Yeah, you had a cl clairvoyant. I sense. did. Well, I always, so Ryan writes the music. In case anyone doesn't know, and. Um, I've always been a huge fan of Ryan's writing and I always felt like in the beginning as the music was coming out I was a huge fan before I entered the band and um, you know it connected with like a really small kind of like niche amount of people it was like successful in some ways in Canada but it just kind of like didn't really fully get the I thought the light that it deserved and I said it I've said it before and I'll say it again I just really feel like it wasn't the right generation for that music to to um, fully come into its into its you know come into its fullness or its light. And I think um, this is just the generation. Like it just I was like, there's gonna be a, this a group of kids someday or people that get this, and it's just not right now. So I think you were ahead of your time, buddy. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Like, what? Yeah, shock, <laughs> disbelief, um, Twilight Zone, but like a, a good episode um, where something bad doesn't happen. Yeah, a dream come true. Like, you know, it restores your belief in magic a little bit. It's so cool when, when you find success that isn't manufactured or isn't strategic, that's abstract and inexplicable. It's like there's all these labels and managers and bands and teams trying to connect with a lot of people and and bless all of us for for making these efforts you have to but this came about by none of those methods and that's just very satisfying and yeah it just it just restores your your belief and trust in the universe and and the whims of fate so yeah we we welcomed this shocking news with deep gratitude and uh a, a re-energized sensibility within the band to meet the energy with, with hard work, new music, and tons of energy. And here we are in Australia, like kind of in, in the womb of this new, new beginning. So yeah, it's very special. Yeah, the TikTok thing certainly is influencing our, our creative energy, but in a way that is just granting us permission not to feel like we have to take influence from anything other than our own sensibilities, like our own true artistic whims. So in, in one sense, they're just allowing us to, to believe in ourselves. And, and that's the best kind of influence I think one can get from uh, an external force as opposed to trying to appease an external force. The message we're receiving is appease yourself and the rest will follow. So that's the place from which we're writing this new music. 2023 is a busy year. We're gonna make a new record. We're already writing and pre-producing this record as of now, like practicing new songs in hotel rooms on the road and have studio time booked. And we have a bunch more touring to do. And so then all of the, you know, the videos and the new photos and, and the content to, to infiltrate a new album cycle. So all of that has to happen this year. So it's a busy year.
Joni Mitchell, I think as a band, the Pixies, Elvis, and... Uh, Elliot Smith. Yes. Led Zeppelin? <laughs> We're dreaming, right? If we can dream. Yeah, like we might as well shoot high. <laughs> or, you know what, maybe Bjork. I think Bjork and Mother Mother would, would be strange and magnificent. Pixies, Bossa Nova. I heard that when I was like 10 years old. My dad introduced me to that and it just kind of changed everything. Changed my relationship with music and myself. It's like, oh, I know what it feels like to feel cool now <laughs> in, in a totally unique way. That isn't like what other people out there are defining cool as. Probably natural born killers. That'd be pretty cool, right? Natural born killers. Or Pulp Fiction. <laughs> what do we. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes I think, like, why is my leg doing that? And sometimes when it's at its best, you're not thinking at all. You're just in the flow, you're in the channel of that energy. But 95% of the time, you're thinking about your leg or your hair. Or like why your collar is stuck behind your guitar strap, stupid things like why that. You wore an outfit that was slightly too tight and ate too big of a dinner, that kind of stuff. Totally. <laughs> Sexy times. Miley Cyrus. Yeah, yeah. oh, hell yeah. yeah. Hell yeah. Ball cap? <clears throat> so one of our songs, yeah, that one. That one is, still is one of my faves. The first concert I went to was the Northern Pikes at a Tidemark Theater in Campbell River, BC, with my mom. I think the best, most impactful was Lollapalooza in the 90s as a kid. I went with my dad and Molly, who's in the band, my sister, and it was the first introduction to that bohemia rock and roll energy, and it was totally intoxicating and I don't think I've um, it hasn't worn off yet that's a hard one they're both so cool um, Backstreet Boy Spice Girls <laughs> yeah <laughs> but I don't know probably like Dr. Dre um, Trent Reznor on the industry that's an interesting a, question yeah that's yeah a Bach Bach <laughs> <laughs> I, I would say Dr. Dre is, is totally up there. All the, yeah, yeah, that, that uh, documentary, The Defiant Ones, it's pretty eye-opening how much that man influenced uh, so many genres in the hip-hop genre, him and Jimmy Iovine. It's a, it's a must-watch for music buffs. Probably the same advice, just, you know, stop caring about not only what other people think about you but what you think about you yeah stop caring what you think about you yeah i mean i just think stop caring what anyone else thinks is a really good it's a really good uh mo to live by the moment i knew i wanted to be a musician was when i watched a movie called crossroads uh, which is a, is a guitar movie and long story short the last scene is uh, a jam between a blues player and the devil and whoever wins uh, determines the fate of this old guy's soul and it's a very epic they call it a duel with, with Steve Vai. Steve Vai is the devil. Anyway, so that, that just totally got in my bones and got me addicted to guitar and, yeah, the rock and roll dream. You? I watched a documentary called This Is Elvis when I was seven, and then I was convinced that I was Elvis reincarnated, and I, uh, <laughs> that was it. Yeah. <laughs>